Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would make a video kind of talking about my pregnancy journey so far. I know I'm a little bit late to the game because some girls make videos of their weekly updates of their pregnancy, but um, since I just started making videos, I haven't been able to do that. So I thought that I would maybe talk about um, my pregnancy so far from my first, second, and third trimester up until now. So yeah, if you're interested in watching this video, then keep watching. <laughs> So I quickly just want to say a disclaimer before this video starts that I have two cats and they keep on moving what I have my camera balancing on. So if I keep on changing frames, then that's why. So I have everything written down in this pink notebook that I'm going to be referencing to. So if I keep on looking down, then that's why. Um, I kind of had to sit down and think about my weeks of pregnancy because you kind of forget about all the things that you've gone through from the beginning until towards the end, which is what I'm at now. I'm at 27 weeks and 5 days, so almost 28 weeks. So my due date is on August 14th, so that is about two weeks away from now. So I'm just going to be going through and reading off what I have week by week written down. So the main thing when you get pregnant is they go off of your last menstrual period and the funny thing to me is that I've never done this before so I find it odd why I actually did this but I wrote down on my calendar on the fridge my last menstrual period before I got pregnant um, I don't know if it was like a subconscious thing <laughs> for my body being like you're gonna be pregnant soon or what but I just think that it's a little weird because I've never done that before and for some reason that was the first time I did that and I happened to get pregnant after that so my last menstrual period was on November 8th and that was extremely helpful when I did find out I was pregnant because you're going to get asked that if you are pregnant or have had a baby. <laughs> you're going to get asked that millions and millions and millions of times. So to know that that was an accurate date was super helpful for me. And then going off of that too, because I had written down that my last period was on November 8th, um, when it came time to me having my next menstrual cycle, I didn't really think anything of it because I've experienced late periods my whole life. Um, when I first started having menstrual cycles, I would have one period and then I wouldn't have it for three months and then I would have it regular for one month and then it would be four months and so I've always had really, really inconsistent periods. I don't know if that's TMI for some people. but. Um, so when it came time to me thinking maybe I'm, maybe I could be pregnant, I didn't really think that for my first initial thought because I've had inconsistent periods, like I said, my whole life. Um, so I just kind of let it slide over my head, wasn't really thinking about that. And then around Thanksgiving, I remember specifically on Thanksgiving when I had my family over and I was making my first Thanksgiving for everybody, I was so tired so completely tired. I remember laying on the floor in my living room, in this living room, and being like, I just can't get up. Like, I can't do it. I don't, I don't want to cook anymore. I'm just so tired. I just want to go to sleep. I'm so tired. And I remember calling my mom because my parents live um, out of state. They live in Hawaii. And I remember calling my mom just being like, I just, I don't think I can do it. And we were just joking about it because She's like, it's only your first Thanksgiving that you're cooking and you're already so over it and you don't want to do it. I'm like, I can't do it anymore. But I specifically, I specifically remember on Thanksgiving being just extremely tired and extremely hungry too. I kept on eating all day, snacking while I was cooking and I felt like I couldn't like satisfy that hunger that I had. And I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> So after Thanksgiving, that's when me and my boyfriend started questioning maybe that I could be pregnant. He was initially the first one to be like, you haven't had your period. Do you think that maybe you could be pregnant? And I was like, no, 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 I'm not pregnant. I'm not pregnant, blah, 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 blah. So a few days go by, he's still like, maybe you should take a test. I'm like, no, I've always had late periods. I'm not pregnant, whatever. And then about, I think it was about 10 days to almost two weeks, and he's like, you need to take a pregnancy test. And I remember him saying um, while he was at work that he was eating lunch with one of his coworkers, and they were like looking at him all weird, and he's like, what? And he, 
I guess his coworker was like, your girlfriend must be pregnant because the way that you're eating, you look like you're, you've are you been starved for like weeks. And he was like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, dude, when you're eating like crazy, that means your girlfriend's pregnant. <laughs> He's like, I don't believe that. And he like told me that. And I was just like, whatever. That's, that's just like one person's opinion. Like, don't even listen to them, whatever. And then that's when I started questioning it. I think it had been late by 10 days to almost two weeks by this point. So I was starting to get a little bit nervous. I remember specifically when I took my pregnancy test, it was on December 9th because it was a Friday that day and um, my boyfriend had the day off. I think we were wrapping Christmas presents with his sister and everything like that. And he went and bought me a pregnancy test because he's like, this is ridiculous. You need to take a pregnancy test. And I was like, okay. So I remember specifically it was December 9th and I was already three to four weeks pregnant. And if I sound a little bit off on my weeks and everything like that, it's just, it's really fuzzy trying to like talk about it um, and trying to remember it specifically week by week and like from my last menstrual period and stuff. So if you're like, what are you talking about? You're saying that you're like 10 days late, but you're already three to four weeks pregnant. Like what the hell are you talking about? That's just what I have written down and calculated from what I remember. <laughs> Okay, this is like the third time that I've tried to film this part because my cats have literally knocked over my phone like seven times. So anyways, what I was saying is that when I took my pregnancy test, it was on December 9th. I specifically remember that day because my boyfriend was off of work and we had his family over wrapping presents and stuff, which obviously wasn't the greatest time to be taking a pregnancy test while we have people in our house. Um, logically, right, you would want to do it when you are in the privacy of your own home so you can experience that moment um, with your partner. Um, so we bought a pack of two pregnancy tests. The first one that I took came back completely inconclusive. There was n not even any bars or anything that showed up. So that was a little bit discouraging and irritating because at that point I obviously wanted to know if I was pregnant or not. And then so I waited a little bit, drank a crap ton of water and took the second one and it came back positive. I kind of sat there for a few minutes in shock because I've never been pregnant before. I'm sure if you've experienced being pregnant, um, whether or not you have it planned, it's it's still sh a shocking feeling to see or to find out that you, you are actually pregnant with a baby. So um, it was just a little kind of a weird feeling for, <laughs> for a few minutes. And then I had him come into the bathroom so I could show him and I could tell that he was really excited, but by the look on my face, he was a little bit thrown off and nervous because I was just like trying to smile and like I had such an overwhelming feeling that I didn't know what to feel in that moment, which isn't usually what you see when people, you know, in the movies or whatever, when people take pregnancy tests and they're jumping up and down, they're crying and they're so excited. And I never imagined that when I did find out that moment that I was pregnant in my life that I would be so opposite of being extremely happy and joyful. I mean deep down I was extremely happy but I just didn't know it at that moment because I was still in shock. So yeah we had people in our house like I said and we kind of couldn't talk about um couldn't talk about it at all at that moment which was something that I wish I wish I didn't have people in my house so I could kind of sit there with my boyfriend, my partner, and kind of be like, so I'm pregnant. <laughs> what What now? Like, what are we, what now? I didn't realize that I wanted kids until I got pregnant and in that moment of my life. You know, I've always wanted children, but I don't think it obviously doesn't become a reality until it's actually a reality. <laughs> found out that I was pregnant. I had been on Zoloft for the last four years of my life. Um, if you don't know what Zoloft is, it's an anti-anxiety, anti-depression medication, and I was taking 50 milligrams of it. And I know that um, some doctors can tell you that you can take antidepressants while you're pregnant, but I absolutely did not want to do that um, because it can cause birth defects. So right away, I was basically online researching how to wean off of Zoloft uh, and I've kind of known about that process already um, from previously wanting to stop taking it. So basically at that point I knew that I wanted to get off of Zoloft. Um, and the next day after I found out that I was pregnant I actually went to the hospital because I was extremely dehydrated. So while I was at the hospital I had asked the doctor 
that was seeing me how to properly wean off of Zoloft and I kind of had a conversation with him and asked him if what I had been looking up online was the right way and he basically said yes. So if you have a similar situation, I would suggest maybe going and talking to your doctor about um, how to wean off medication. Um, I'm obviously not a professional, so I don't want to give anybody advice as to how I did it, so I'm not going to be talking about how I went off of my medication while I was pregnant. So that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about next when I start talking about um, morning sickness and withdrawal around week eight. <laughs> so around this point, I was about eight weeks. Um, it was around Christmas. I remember specifically Christmas Eve, I was extremely sick. I started getting really bad morning sickness and I think that the um, withdrawal from my medication had started setting in and I just overall was not feeling good. Everything was making me sick. Um, I remember the first time that I actually did throw up, I went out to lunch with my boyfriend to a Mexican food restaurant and had cheese enchiladas, and I couldn't even make it back to my house on time without throwing up in a bag in the car. Um, and then after that point, everything was just not staying down. So by week nine, I had full-blown morning sickness. Um, was in a pretty bad withdrawal from my medication and I just remember everything was coming up I couldn't keep anything down and I didn't want anybody to touch me. I didn't want my boyfriend to touch me I just didn't even want to be looked at the thought of somebody touching me or giving me a hug made me cringe <laughs> I didn't want anybody near me um, Because I think I just felt so sick on the inside that obviously it was reflecting on the outside and I just didn't want anything to do with anybody at that point. So yeah, basically from 8 week to 8-12, which is usually the most pivotal point of morning sickness, is what happened to me. <laughs> Everything was terrible. So January 31st was my first OB appointment. Um, that's when I got my first ultrasound and I got to see my daughter for the first time, which at that time, I didn't know that it was a girl. And around this time, when you do go to the doctor, around 12 weeks, um, they order you to do um, tests for your baby to make sure it doesn't have any birth defects. But I unfortunately was going to Hawaii um, on February 2nd, which was two days after my appointment. And I couldn't, I didn't get to finish the second part of my screening that I was supposed to do. So I actually haven't taken the full um, prenatal screening. I don't know what, exactly what it's called. I think it's called like the California screening um, for birth defects, but I didn't actually get to take the full one um, because I was out of state at the time. So I went to Hawaii on February 2nd to go visit my parents. Um, my boyfriend travels for work, so he leaves um, for months at a time. And so that was basically the timing. He was going out of state for about a month and a half. And so my parents were like, why don't you come here for a month? Um, come visit us while you're still small and while you still can fly. Because I knew that it was basically the last time that I would be able to go see my parents by myself without the baby or before the baby comes. So around February 14th, I was 14 weeks pregnant. I remember exactly on Valentine's Day, I was 14 weeks pregnant. And that was the first time that I had posted a picture on social media announcing my pregnancy. And at that time, my morning sickness had basically subsided almost all the way. There were still like a few things that I would smell or eat and it would make me sick. One thing that was pretty bad that I experienced in my second trimester was I was having fainting spells. And a, I guess that's a normal thing for when you're pregnant. It's something to do with the blood vessels opening up in your legs when you're around a certain amount of weeks. I was 14 weeks and I remember going to the hospital... Um, around 15 weeks for fainting because I had fainted while I was in Walmart. They told me that that's something that you can experience while you're pregnant from um, your second trimester, I think from 14 to 18 weeks. But I had fainted about six or seven times during that span from 14 to 17 weeks. But yeah, it was pretty scary because any time that I would go out, um, they said it was happening from standing up and walking around a lot, doing a lot of walking, so anytime I would be in a department store like Target or Walmart or anything like that. Um, I would start to feel extremely faint 
seeing black spots, getting really clammy and sweaty. I would have to sit down on the ground and that was just no fun. <laughs> so basically the whole month of February I was in Hawaii. Um, I had written down here that I was starting to get mood swings. I was starting to feel really irritable around that point. Um, my second trimester from 14 weeks. I was getting really irritated by people. I was taking things really personally. If somebody would say something a slightly weird tone in public, I would take it extremely personal and be like, what do they say? So I was just getting pretty irritated by people in general. I know that's like a normal thing to start having mood swings around that point, but yeah, there was definitely a few weeks of time to where I was pretty crabby. <laughs> So that whole month I was in Hawaii in February was when I was 14 to 18 weeks pregnant. And at that time, my morning sickness had basically subsided almost all the way. I started getting mood swings. I was being pretty irritable and I was getting really annoyed with people. I was getting really anxious because I really wanted to know the gender of the baby. My parents were also really kind enough to throw me a baby shower while I was there with my friends. So that was really fun getting to celebrate with my girlfriends that I've known for forever because I do live in California now and I don't hang out with a lot of people. I only have a few friends here, but um, that was really special to me to get to celebrate um, my pregnancy and my baby with all of my friends while I was there. So my parents were kind enough to throw me a super nice baby shower on the beach. So when I was around 20 weeks, um, that was the beginning of April. Um, I started eating again fully and nothing was really making me sick um, besides the stuff that had made me sick while I was having morning sickness I still can't eat certain things that I would smell or see other people eating while I was really sick because it still makes me nauseous like mentally thinking about it and my mood started mellowing out a lot um, I think my hormones were starting to balance out at that time and my um, withdrawal from Zoloft was coming to an end so I started feeling a lot better um, only downside is is I started getting really bad insomnia around 20 weeks and it still hasn't stopped I came home from Hawaii and I could not sleep I would try to lay down at 8 o'clock and I would stay up until 5:45 in the morning I would sleep for an hour and I would wake up and I would stay awake the whole day and then when it came time to go to sleep again, I was awake. I was so alert and awake during the night. I couldn't relax. I remember I was constantly taking baths to try and relax and make myself feel tired and go to sleep. I would literally try anything to make myself go to sleep and it just, nothing was working. So from 20 to 24 weeks, I remember around my 21st week, I had actually gotten very sick. So I was sick for about 10 days. They had put me on a mild antibiotic because I, had symptoms of the flu which was terrible I like I said I was in Hawaii during a chunk of my first trimester so I was unable to get um, a flu shot or anything like that so that was pretty scary because I know that flu can be very um, a serious thing for babies while you're pregnant around 20 to 21 weeks I started experiencing my first movement so um, I remember when I was in Hawaii I um, would feel twitching in my stomach and I didn't I couldn't decipher if that was just my stomach literally twitching or if that was the baby kicking come to find out I knew that now I know now that that was the baby actually moving One, two, three, four, five, and I know that I said that my mood swings had kind of subsided but um, I remember at this point I was starting to plan for our baby shower that we were having here in California um, for the family that I do have here and our friends and everything like that. Um, I started feeling really overwhelmed. I remember having this overwhelmed feeling that I needed to get everything done right then and there. I needed to get our crib, we needed to get the change table, we needed to get everything and I needed to start getting these things to set it up. And I was just really overwhelming myself um, with trying to plan a bunch of stuff out. And on top of that, I was trying to plan a baby shower and I still had not known the gender of the baby. Um, my doctor had ordered an ultrasound for me to go have, even though she was capable of doing an ultrasound and telling me the gender at my doctor's appointments, which she didn't. So I had to wait six weeks to get the special ultrasound done, which they couldn't get me in for two months. So at 23 weeks, I went and I paid an ultrasound technician at some weird ultrasound office that they do 
to tell me the gender of my baby, and that's when I found out that it was a girl. <laughs> I know I'm like a super impatient person but I think that with anybody that's pregnant when it comes to finding out the gender of your baby you've already waited so long 24 weeks is a pretty long time I wanted to know the gender of my baby and I was willing to pay whatever amount of money to find out now that time it was gonna make it easier on my life because I was trying to plan a baby shower for 80 people and I didn't know the gender of my baby and it was driving me crazy because I couldn't what do I buy? Pink or blue? I don't know. <laughs> and then around 24 weeks, I actually started showing. I remember being really happy around 24 weeks. Um, my mood had just mellowed out. You know, everything was started started calming down after I found out the gender. I could finally plan the baby shower, and I wasn't overwhelmed. Um, we got a bunch of new furniture in our house. And I got to go start buying baby clothes, which everything was just really exciting at that point. So I remember being super happy around 24 weeks. And then skip forward to May. Um, I was 27 weeks on Mother's Day. Um, and I specifically remember this because I started getting body aches. I started getting really bad heartburn, really bad indigestion. And I started getting bad pelvic separation or pelvic pain and pressure in my pelvis. But basically that was the main thing around week 27 until my third trimester that I was just having really bad heartburn and experiencing a lot of um, pain in my pelvis. Moving into the third trimester, so 27 weeks up until this point. So my third trimester started in June. And I had a lot of things going on in June. Um, we had our baby shower. I had my anniversary with my boyfriend, his birthday. Um, started doing a lot of things from the nursery, getting everything like that together. And there wasn't a lot of change to my body um, as far as pain or symptoms or anything like that goes. I still just had a lot of pelvic pain and I was experiencing more pressure. It was getting a lot harder to move around too. I remember cleaning, I would drop things on the ground and it would be hard to pick them up. It was getting hard to shave my legs. And I was just having a lot of pain in my back. Um, my insomnia was still raging, still is raging until this day. <laughs> but our baby shower was super amazing. It was on June 10th. Um, we had a lot of my family, his family, our friends come. And it was amazing that so much of our friends and family came to support us and our daughter. We basically got the majority of everything that we needed for our nursery and for our daughter from our baby shower. So we are super grateful for that. And then moving on to July, 34 to 37 weeks, which is the week that I'm at right now. In July, I had my birthday, which was on the 7th. I turned 25 years old. And the weather changed in July. It started getting extremely hot and I'm still extremely hot. I'm sweating right now. <laughs> I think that's from all the extra blood in your body too though. I'm just constantly hot. And as far as symptoms go, they're basically the same. I still have a lot of pelvic pain, um, a lot more pressure now that she's moving down, and sciatic nerve pain in my back, which is not fun at all. I went and I bought a hot compress, so I will heat that up and I will put it on my back or the areas that are hurting me and that has helped a lot. I basically can barely even clean anymore when it comes to bending down. That's out of the question. When I drop something, I can't pick it up. I've gotten a lot more hungry too. I know that in the last few weeks of your pregnancy, your baby is gaining a half a pound to a pound a week. So that's probably why that my appetite has increased immensely. I've been getting a lot more tired during the day too. I'm still not really sleeping that well at night. Um, it's been getting a little bit better. Um, the last week or two, I've actually been starting to go to bed around normal hours, if you consider normal anywhere from midnight to two in the morning, but that's better than five to six in the morning. And so that brings us up to 37 weeks, which is what I am at now. So when I went in for my 36 week update, because I am be being seen once a week now by my OB, 
Um, she told me that my stomach is measuring smaller than normal, so she put in a referral for me to go this week um, to have a ultrasound done for fetal development, which I did. And as far as fetal development goes, she is completely on track. She is weighing at 7 pounds and 12 ounces. The ultrasound technician told me that that could uh, differ from a half a pound um, less or a half a pound more, but she told me more likely because I still have two more weeks or more to go that um, she is most likely going to be around the eight pound mark. And also for the last five weeks, I've been going to a birthing class um, every Friday once a week. It's a lot of information that I've already read up on, but I mean, I would still recommend it to anybody. Extra information doesn't hurt when it comes to you and your baby. So yeah, I hope this was a little bit interesting or relatable to some of you moms-to-be or already moms out there watching. We'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! You want to be in my YouTube videos? I think that you'll be the star. Huh. Are you tired? You're tired, huh?